So proton therapy is a type of radiotherapy. Um, and similar to other forms of radiotherapy, it's given in small doses each day. Um, but it's different from what we call conventional radiotherapy in the fact that it's a, a slightly different uh, particle. And uh, that has some beneficial properties, um, particularly when uh, we're trying to really sort of reduce side effects associated with radiotherapy. Now, the reason why proton therapy isn't available everywhere is because it's quite a large uh, machine, usually an entire building, um, which is much bigger and, uh, than a standard conventional radiotherapy, so it isn't ev available everywhere. In the UK, for example, um, most major cities or major hospitals will have uh, a radiotherapy uh, treatment uh, machine or links with hospitals that can treat people with conventional uh, standard radiotherapy. Uh, but in the UK particularly, uh, we now have uh, two um, proton beam therapy centres which uh, represent the national uh, proton beam therapy uh, service. And one is located in, in, uh, in London and one is located in uh, Manchester. One of the advantages of proton beam therapy is the ability to reduce side effects. So... Um, a lot of the treatments uh, for proton beam therapy, a lot, of the, a lot of the cancer types where proton beam therapy is recommended are in cancer types where it's really critical to reduce the side effects uh, associated with treatment of those cancers. So, for example, some of the really core and first indications that were ever um, used for proton therapy is for um, children, pediatric cancers, or for patients who have tumours at the, um, the base of the skull where where the cancer might be in close proximity to important structures like the brain or the spinal cord. But we're now starting to use uh, proton radiotherapy for um, other uh, cancer types uh, in, in adult patients who have cancer, particularly where we know that um, reducing side effects is uh, really important. And so, for example, this might be for cancers of the head and neck, um, where we're trying to reduce um, the need for feeding tubes, it can be in patients with left-sided breast cancers where we're trying to reduce radiation dose to the heart. And it can be in uh, certain types of lung cancers also where we're trying to reduce dose to the heart um, or be able to deliver treatments um, safely with protons that we wouldn't be able to deliver safely with conventional radiation treatments. So proton beam therapy is, um, you know, one of the tools available to um, oncologists. And um, it's no better or worse than other treatments. They all just have particular uh, profiles that mean that they're more useful in certain circumstances. So in a, whenever you see a, a, an oncologist about managing a cancer, they will always think about all the treatments available to them. And that includes surgery, it includes chemotherapy, and it includes radiotherapy. And some of those different treatments are indicated in different circumstances. So the treatment that's recommended really very much depends upon your own individual circumstances. When someone's recommended to receive treatment with radiotherapy, again, that can be uh, given in different ways. And there are certain circumstances where um, proton radiotherapy and the ability to reduce side effects is really useful. So it isn't necessarily needed for all patients with cancer having radiotherapy, but it can be very useful in, in certain circumstances. The main thing to say about proton radiotherapy is, is that it's effectively radiotherapy, but the way it's given uh, and the behavior of, the, of what's called the proton, so this is the particle that's being used, that's different from conventional radiotherapy, is that... Um, there's less uh, radiotherapy dose that goes to the normal tissues that are surrounding the cancer that you're trying to treat. And because of that, really the aim of proton therapy is to give patients less side effects than they would have got with conventional standard radiotherapy. So the side effects would be very similar in terms of their profile, and that really depends what area of the body you're trying to treat. So it might be fatigue, cough, might be problems with swallowing, depending upon where the cancer is, but really the aim with protons is to reduce the level of side effects that a patient experiences. 
Proton therapy it can be useful for certain patients with, with lung cancer. Um, although um, many of these patients can be treated with standard radiotherapy, there are certain circumstances where proton therapy is either um, may result in being able to treat the patient with less side effects or would allow patients to be treated with a sort of curative um, a treatment as opposed to being uh, a treatment that is you know palliative just for really for, for symptoms. So uh, for example, uh, proton radiotherapy can be useful for uh, patients with uh, non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, and that, that it can be used for patients with with early lung cancers, uh, as well as patients with uh, what we call locally advanced lung cancers. So these are patients that haven't got a metastatic lung cancer, but they have disease that's uh, confined to the to the chest in the lungs and the lymph nodes. It can also be useful for patients with uh, mesothelioma, um, and this is where patients can be treated, we use proton radiotherapy to treat the whole uh, hemi, you know, half of the, the uh, chest wall and the hemithorax. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. And it can also be uh, useful for patients who, is, who need radiotherapy uh, following surgery for uh, thymoma, which is a, um, a, an enlargement of the thymic gland um, in the front part of the chest. So for patients with non-small cell lung cancer, there are certain circumstances where protons you know, could be very useful. So certainly patients who have either an early lung cancer or a locally advanced lung cancer that can't be safely treated with conventional radiotherapy, perhaps because it's too big, or even in some circumstances because the patient's respiratory function, their lung function is not quite good enough for conventional radiotherapy. In that circumstances, uh, protons has the potential to allow patients to be treated with um, radical radiotherapy uh, cure, uh, with, with, a, with the aim of curing the cancer where that wouldn't have been possible uh, with conventional radiotherapy treatments. There are also patients where um, the lung cancer might be very close to critical structures, um, the spinal cord or even very close to the heart. And we know that uh, reducing the dose to organs like the heart in terms of the radiation dose that, that they receive because they're close to the cancer uh, can be associated with uh, a worse outcome for patients in the longer term. So for a certain percentage of patients with non-small cell lung cancer, reducing the dose to uh, all these important structures in the chest like the heart um, that would get some radiation dose because they're close to the tumor uh, has the potential to to be uh, be done with protons, uh, and that may ultimately result in in better outcomes for patients. And then some of the other indications for uh, proton therapy are uh, a little bit um, uh, less common, but I think ones where it's really you know protons has a real role. One of them is in patients who've had radiotherapy in the past, either because they've had radiotherapy for the same cancer and it's been under control for many years or a long period of time, or for patients who've had uh, a previous cancer and then the second cancer might be close to where the first one was treated with radiotherapy, or for patients who've had radiotherapy for um, another different type of cancer in the past, say, for example, a breast cancer, but they then present with a lung cancer and need radiotherapy, where we have to do radiation treatment close to an area that was treated with radiation in the past, that can be challenging. And protons uh, has a role there about minimizing um, uh, side effects. And again, allowing us to give a higher dose to the tumor in those circumstances right. where it would be more difficult when we treat patients with conventional standard radiotherapy. Okay. And then I think one of the last areas is for patients who have uh, a, a condition called pulmonary fibrosis. So patients who have uh, sort of chronic inflammation of the lungs, um, which is an ongoing condition, some of those patients will unfortunately develop a lung cancer and that can be very difficult to treat with, um, with surgery or radiotherapy or, or many other treatments. And we know that certainly with radiotherapy, if we can reduce the radiation dose that goes to the surrounding um, lung uh, near the cancer, we can reduce the risks of, uh, of those patients having side effects when they have radiotherapy. And that I think is a really another, another good indication for proton radiotherapy for non-small cell lung cancer.
So uh, patients with uh, thymoma often will have um, surgery and depending upon the results of uh, the surgery, there will be uh, uh, some benefit from having what we call adjuvant radiotherapy. So this is radiotherapy uh, after surgery. And because of where the thymomas tend to sit, which is in the anterior part of the chest, they're close to the heart, um, uh, but they're also potentially, uh, like I said, in women close to where the breast tissue is. And uh, proton radiotherapy can be used in that circumstance to um, uh, reduce the risk of uh, future side effects. And those side effects could include heart problems that might occur later in life, or even uh, second cancers caused by the radiation. And, and by using protons to reduce the dose of radiotherapy that's received, then uh, the aim is that all of those, uh, what we call late, longer term side effects can be reduced. Mesothelioma is a cancer of the, the lining of the lungs and uh, the treatment for, for that can involve a combination of, of surgery, uh, different types of chemotherapy and also radiotherapy. Uh, now, using conventional standard radiotherapy, trying to treat all sites of disease um, around what we call the hemithorax, so the cavity in which the, the lung sits, is quite challenging. Now, uh, proton therapy allows us to treat effectively all the areas of mesothelioma uh, in a safer way with the aim of uh, controlling uh, mesothelioma, certainly for, for longer. Uh, I'm the chief investigator of a trial in the UK uh, looking at uh, hemithoracic radiotherapy, it's called, with protons in patients who've not had any uh, prior systemic treatment, chemotherapy, or any prior surgery. Uh, and that's the, the subject of the trial that we'll be uh, running called HIPMESO. But it potentially has a role in the management of uh, uh, mesothelium patients in, in different circumstances. So patients who've had uh, drug therapy in the past and who've unfortunately progressed despite that uh, chemotherapy, that drug therapy, or patients who've had uh, surgery. And um, there's a role uh, and a rationale um, according to uh, international consensus guidelines that uh, when you're going to treat uh, the hemithorax, so this large area with radiotherapy, that the best and the safest way to do that is with uh, proton radiotherapy.